I recently went through a very traumatic phase of my life, a rather unusual experience for anyone my age. I had a, dare I say it, a crush on a boy. It was quite trivial, the celebrity type. We barely exchanged two words. It started off small, but obviously there was that subconscious what-if question. This lovelorn spell wore off after two conversations with him, but the consequences of a pleasant emotion were little unpleasant. I constantly judged myself for being so distracted by the small crush when there were much bigger things to worry about, like grades and extracurriculars and personal growth. I refused to believe or accept that this experience, this emotion was also a part of the personal growth I desired. So I alienated the feelings I had for this boy. I don't need a boy in my life. It's not me, I reasoned. When my reasoning didn't suffice, I spiraled down a path of self-loathing and insecurity. It was no longer a crush, but a personal problem. We often fall prey to our negative emotions. Negative emotions range from a minor difficulty that evokes worry to a depressed state of mind. This can, contrary to popular belief, produce good results. It is human tendency to be overwhelmed by negative emotions, letting them take the reins over the mind. In such situations, fighting back might seem like the toughest way out. So I battled mine by embracing it and then making use of this creative emotion. Oh, stay love, you grew on me like a pro creeper. Find another to devour later. Go on, be on your way. Hey, hey. Now it's a problem for me and the gardener. For he has to plant me a dozen roses every time I think of you and wait. I used this bleakness in my life, however stupid the origin of it might be, to write my first ever original song. And this negativity opened another door full of creative potential. So the question is, do I regret that crush? Absolutely not. It jumbled up my state of mind for sure, but I discovered a new skill. Negative emotions can often take control of our mind. Here is two ways in, to how, in how to turn the tables. The first step to a healthy recovery is acceptance. Acceptance of the emotion, whether it is anger or sadness or stress. According to Harvard Medical School psychologist Susan David, we either judge ourselves for feeling a certain way or push aside whatever it is that we are feeling. Very much like how I judged myself for having natural, normal feelings for someone and then running away from it. The common flaw in these two methods of dealing with emotion is that there's no acceptance whatsoever. One is alienating oneself from an integral responsible, for an integral element that's responsible for your wholesome growth. To quote Susan David, normal, natural emotions are now seen as good or bad. But when we push aside normal emotions to embrace false posit positivity, we lose our capacity to develop skills to deal with the world as it is and not as we wish it to be. So don't dare to feel bad about negative emotions as it only compounds the problem. The second step is a small shift in mindset that makes all the difference. The second step is a small shift in mindset that makes all the difference. Once we've accepted the situation or emotion, we try and live life with a lens of that acceptance. We stop categorizing our experiences as good or bad. If the experience was good, well, that's amazing. If it was bad, we try looking upon it 
as a new experience rather than a bad experience. If we look at bad experiences as new experiences, it might as well change our outlook towards life. Constructive use of negative emotion is a sure shot way of not only overcoming the emotion, but also flourishing as an individual. And do not get me started on the immense feeling of self-satisfaction. Channeling our negative emotions to produce creative outcomes is not as hard as it sounds. Pick up a paper and write about it. Pick up that basketball and practice a little vigorously to remove the frustration. Take that guitar and strum a little harder. The possibilities are endless. We should just be willing to grab the opportunity disguised in the ugly mask.